Hi, I'm Amy McKechnie, and I am the author of this book, 10,000 Tries. And my editor and I joke that it took 10,000 tries to get it right because it actually did many, many drafts. But I think we um, turned out a great book and I'm excited for you to read it. It tells the story of our hero, Golden Macaroni Maroni. His friends call him Golden Macaroni or sometimes Goldfish or Goldilocks. They have a lot of fun with his name. And he is the smallest and shortest in the class. And he is also the biggest fan of legendary international super soccer star, Lionel Messi, who is also small and one of the greatest, maybe arguably the best greatest player in the world. So Golden wants to be him. And he believes if he puts in enough practice, maybe like 10,000 hours of practice, he too can be legendary and great. Um, but first he has to survive middle school, win the soccer championship and keep Lucy Little House, his best friend of next door from moving away. And if he can do that, maybe he can prevent his dad from losing to the three worst letters in the alphabet. ALS, which is amyotrophic lateral scler sclerosis, which is a disease that affects your nerve cells um, in your brain and your muscles so that you lose all ability to move. And Golden believes he can do that if he puts in enough effort, because that's what he's always been taught. With enough effort and enough heart, you can accomplish anything that you want. Um, I think you're going to laugh, you might cry, but I think you're really going to love it. So I hope you'll open up this book. Um, the background is my son was obsessed with Lionel Messi and I was his coach. And I even coached a few times in this sweatshirt. Okay, a lot of times, it's a really old sweatshirt. And at the same time, my son's teammate had a dad who'd just been diagnosed with ALS. And um, if you've ever watched or known a group of middle school boys, you'll know that they want to be bigger, stronger, and faster. And I was watching this at the same time, my very strong, fast, big friend um, was losing most things. And so I wrote a book about it. I'm gonna read an excerpt, kind of from the middle. And Golden has had to step up a lot, as has the whole family. He's one of four kids. And he, um, they all have to help out. Friday night, the last night before our first game, I finally do my own laundry properly. James showed me how to work the machine and pour in detergent correctly, since I forgot to even add soap to Roma's. While my clothes dry, I asked Dad to help me do a workout in the garage before the big game. But my plan is really to help him. Here, I say, handing out Dad a 10-pound hand weight. Yeah, that's not happening, he says. He's already breathing hard from walking down the stairs and into the garage. Start light, I say, putting a 5-pound weight in his hand. I use the 10s myself for alternate bicep curls. I'm the man, I say, even though I can feel them getting really heavy. Huh, he says. Is that what makes you a man? Lifting weights? I think about this. I mean, it's a thing, right? Golden, when I can't even lift this five pounder, will I still be a man? His eyes bore into mine. That's why we're practicing, I protest. Golden, I'm losing my strength even with the practicing. I can't run, can't shoot, can hardly walk. It's not that I don't want to. You know I love soccer, but you know what I love most? He swallows hard. Us? He nods. You're my dream team. Hard seeing you be unkind and angry with mom. I'm not. Mom, he interrupts, is doing what two parents used to. House, work, kids, soccer, groceries, laundry. Taking care of me. Oh, I say, sullen. Sit by me, I sit. She didn't make this happen to me. I wonder if I've set a good enough example of how to really be a man if you don't see that. He stops talking and breathes heavily. I uncurl his clawed left hand and take the weight. 
He continues to breathe in and out for several long minutes. Your captain on the field, how about off the field too? We need a leader. I look up at dad. Isn't that a, what I've been trying to do? But I think of Roma and the reluctant ponytail and the piles of dirty laundry and dishes and clutter that someone needs to take care of. I guess I can do more. If you remember anything I've taught you, I hope it's to treat people well, especially your family. That will make you a man. Sorry, dad. Give mom a big hug, the kind I can't any more. Dad's hand on mine is how I notice his far forearm. It looks like a small mouse is jumping under his skin. I flinch. What's that, dad? Muscle spasm, I'm getting more of them all over my body. How long will it last? A few minutes, sometimes a few hours. I place my fingers on his arm. I can feel the twitching, like electricity trying to run down a broken circuit, moving, stopping, starting, jumping. Does it hurt? No, it feels weird. I'm actually grateful to feel it. It shows my muscles are still working. Do you feel my hand on your arm, I ask? Yes, this, I lightly pinch. How about this? I scratch the mosquito bites on his head and arms and neck. Yes, he says contentedly. I feel everything. Funny that doesn't go away. There's something wrong with the signal, the neurons coming from my brain, but not the other way around. I lean my head against his shoulder, hope he can, hoping he can feel that too. Later that night, I lay out my shorts, socks, and battle pack cleats. Tomorrow, coach will hand me the captain's armband and Mr. T will hand out uniforms. I'll for sure be wearing jersey number 10, Messi's number. I scrounge around the house for white athletic tape to tape around my soccer socks. One, to keep them up, and two, it looks wicked cool. Very carefully, I write my hero's name on the white tape with the black Sharpie, Messi, number 10. I touch my left bicep where the armband will live and feel the muscle flex beneath my touch. I remember the feeling of dad's muscle spasm and wonder what that feels like. I kneel by the side of my bed to pray, something I've only ever done because mom and dad told me to, but today I decide on my own. After all, Messi's a believer too. I've seen him do it a hundred times, pointing at the sky, sky when he scores, like he's acknowledging something or someone up there who holds pieces of his destiny. Destiny. It does seem like destiny flies in the face of 10,000 hours and actually earning a soccer position. But even I have to admit, after all the fighting, after all the hard work, there's a piece of me that's looking for a miracle. So I look up and put my hands together. My mind wanders to the field, to dad on the sidelines watching. The very thought makes my heart pound nervously. Our conversation runs back through my mind. You know, I reason with God, if the disease was to stop right now and dad wouldn't get any better, but he wouldn't get any worse, I would be happy with that, for real. Even if he couldn't ride a bike or kick the ball or run with me on the front lawn, I'll never complain or ask for anything ever again. You can overcome anything if and only if you love something enough. And I do. I love dad that much. I love him even more than that. That's our destiny. Please. Hope you get the book and I hope you love it. Bye.